live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2016. Brought to you by AWS and its ecosystem partners. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Hello everyone, we are here live in uh, Las Vegas with theCUBE all week. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman. We are breaking down all the reInvent coverage. The Cube is going on for three days. Um, Stu and I are going to break down here in Studio B the analysis of Andy Jassy's keynote. This is really day one of the event. Yesterday was kind of a preview. You had James Hamilton uh, Tuesday evening. They had a great band up there. Uh, and then he came on and delivered uh, really an epic performance laying out. As a, he's not a showman in the sense of uh, uh, Steve Jobs-like, but he has a Steve Jobs-like cred uh, James Hamilton, when it comes to the gigs in the community, he delivered the, what I call the secret sauce of AWS's data centers, and then Andy Jassy today with his keynote, again, is so high packed. They start at 8 a.m., which is kind of un, uh, not usual for events, but so much up there. Pat Gelsner came on stage. AI, Stu, first, I want to get your take on today's keynote with Andy Jassy. You were in the front row. What was going on inside the room? Tell us your perspective, give us the vibe, what was the energy level, and what was, what was it like? Yeah, John, as you said, starting at 8 a.m., it's like, uh, oh, we might, must be talking to the tech audience because developers usually like to start a little bit later than that. Um, it was an embarrassment of riches. Uh, Andy gets on stage, as he told you when you met with him up at his home in Seattle, uh, they've gonna, they're going to have about a thousand you know, major new features, updates, uh, and you know, I, I think Andy went through a couple hundred of them uh, up on stage. Uh, you know, this is a group of true believers. Pat Keynote, people started streaming in over an hour ahead of time because only 10,000 could fit in the main tent. They had other remote locations where you could go get, you know, mimosas, Bloody Marys, or coffee uh, if you wanted to watch us, but Damn, well, oh I my God, I should have been all over that, but. It, 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 just to tell you, my fourth year here at the show, and it's like, oh yeah, another tech show. You're going to get keynotes. They're going to make some announcements. Yawn, no. Amazon impresses every year, and they deliver this year. Andy might not yeah. be a showman, but you know he was punching at uh, you know Larry Ellison and Oracle quite a bit. He got huge ovations, like every time they announced a new compute instance, uh, and lots of these things, uh, and a little bit of show flair uh, at the end. Uh, with yeah, the certainly they're going after yeah. the database market, uh, but also they're making some really good infrastructure enhancements with the new services. What was your highlight? If you're going to look at what the most significant, most important story this morning, what what was was squinting through all the great announcements. What ones do you like the best? Oh boy, John, I have to pick one. I pick, mean, pick a handful. Top yeah, three. here, here's a few. Number one is, you know, there's there's some pushback from people in the community that, oh, you know, they announced another ton of new, you know, compute instances. There's all these different storage configurations. Uh, aren't we supposed to be making things simple? Uh, and that's when they had uh, one Amazon Light Sale, which is the virtual private servers in seconds, really goes after, you know, kind of a, you know, simple, low cost model, uh, really digital oceans, the leader in that space, starting at like $5 a month, John. Uh, you know, very exciting, a lot of people, uh, you know, really getting, uh, you know, as to where this can go. Every year, Amazon has a number of competitors that they're just like, up. Oh, we see this opportunity, yeah. we can go after this. And John, this is not a you know, high margin business. I mean, usually it's like, oh, okay, database, I understand. There's huge margin there, yeah. the storage market. Of course, light sale, $5 a month, I mean, you know, they make it up in volume, but it, it's super Well, that's Amazon playbook. Get, drive the price down as low as possible, and then shift the value with the analytics. Um, Am Aurora, Pat, um, um, not Pat Gelsinger, Andy Jassy said, fastest growing service in the history of Amazon. Last year he said Redshift was, because this surpassed Redshift. Uh, he announced PostgreSQL on Aurora, another big significant customer um, request. Um, just on and on, the database seems to be the lock-in spec that they're trying to un undo from Oracle. Um, they're not stopping. I mean, the rhetoric was all time high. Yeah, John, there's Picture of Larry Ellison popped out, popped in, the Oracle O in the, in, in the O. <laughs> we know the long pole in the tent for enterprises is, is the applications you have, making any changes in that, uh, doing any refactoring, you know, tinkering, you know, those are hard things to do. Um, but you know, we've heard a lot from Amazon this week as to how they're helping with migration, how they're giving options, how they're giving bridges, uh, things like VMware on AWS to bridge over from where you are. You know, you can lift and shift it, you can you know move it, you can rewrite it. Lots of options there, uh, and Amazon just has so many services and so many customers, thousands of 
different systems integrators, uh, you know, thousands of ISVs, uh, and really big enterprises, you know, making statements up on stage. When you get Workday up on stage, John, you get McDonald's up on stage, uh, you know, it, it, it's impressive. Yeah, they got some big name accounts, no doubt about it. Uh, Stu, I want to uh, get your thoughts on James Hamilton. Again, Amazon's got so many announcements. I mean, some companies will launch an entire conference keynote around maybe one or two of what they've done out of the many that they've had here. Also to note, there's been over 150 partner announcements. So the ecosystem, Stu, before we get to Hamilton, I want to talk about the ecosystem. This feels a lot like 2011 VMworld. I was kind of joking with Sanjay Poon and the CEO of VMworld, who was just on theCUBE with us, and saying, uh, what do you think about VMworld this year? I mean, I reInvent, I was kind of tongue in cheek. I wanted to zing them a little bit, but Stu, right. this feels so, like. So John, I'm an infrastructure guy and I want to talk about James Hamilton. One thing we got to cover first, green grass. I, you know, green grass is how Amazon is taking their serverless architecture, really Lambda, and they're taking it beyond the cloud. So how do I get, you know, that, that kind of hybrid edge? We talked about it a little bit with Sanjay, but number one, I can start pulling VMware into AWS. Number two, I can now get, you know, my Lambda services uh, out on the edge. They talked about some IoT plays, uh, and they talked about the Snowball Edge, uh, which is going to allow me to have kind of compute and storage uh, down at that edge. Uh, I've seen huge excitement at this show yeah. uh, on the serverless piece. Developers, it's really quick to work with. Uh, 25,000 Amazon Echo Dots were handed out, and I've already talked to people that are already, you know, writing functions for that and figuring out how they can play with it. And God, we haven't even talked about the AI, John, with voice we'll, and we'll, images. We'll, 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 we'll get there. How many but, hours do we have, John? <laughs> we have <laughs> and I, we'll get there, but let's stay on green grass for yeah. a minute because if you think about what that's about, I want to get your thoughts on, your thoughts on the impact of green grass. I mean, obviously, the Lambda, and it's got a little edge piece of snowball tied to it. Uh, you know, green grass and high tides forever, the old song by, you know, Southern Rock Band, Outlaws back in the day. This is a significant announcement. What is the impact to customers? Yeah, well John, I mean, the grass is greener in the cloud, right? So <laughs> now we're going to bring the green grass. Wait, snowball, when a snowball melts, it turns into <laughs> green grass. What, what the hell? Oh, uh, we're going to be riffing all day on this stuff. So David Floyer, uh, our CTO at Wikibon, has been talking for a while uh, that you know, while cloud is great for data, the problem we have is that IoT is going to have most of the, you know, most of the data out on the edge. And we know the physics of moving large amounts of data is really tough. And especially if it's spread out, things like sensors, things like wind farms, getting the networking to that last mile can be difficult. That's where uh, things like green grass are going to be able to play in. How can I take really that cloud type of compute and put it on the edge? Uh, it really ha has potential uh, to, to be a real game changer, I think, John. Uh, we, we talked about what hybrid means uh, and you know, we'll, we'll see. A lot, a lot of buzz in the industry about what Microsoft's doing with Azure Stack uh, and you know, lots of pieces, but you know, green grass you know, gives this new model of programming, it gives the developers, uh, gives me, you know, I, I can use the ARM processors uh, out on the edge and you know, we can talk about how that fits with James Hamilton too. We are here inside the hall next to theCUBE, Studio B, so much content, we have to actually set up a separate set. Stu, I want to get your thoughts on, I mean obviously, the, we can go on forever, but the significant uh, innovation on multiple fronts for Amazon, you mentioned green grass, snowball, multiple instances, um, and certainly they got all the analytics on, on top of the stack with Redshift and other stuff, Kinesis, streaming, goes on and on, the list goes on and on. But you look at what they're doing with green grass and snowball, and then you go look at what James Hamilton talked about yesterday. Now they're going down and innovating down to the actual physical chip level, they're doing stuff with the network routes, they're controlling the packet, they're not there. no one's touching the packets. They are significantly building the next global infrastructure backbone for themselves to power the world. This is, to me, I thought, uh, a subtle talk that James gave. There's a ton of nuance in there. Your thoughts on last night's um, really epic presentation. I know we're going to have a sit down exclusive interview with, with James Hamilton, with Rob Hofar, new editor in chief of SiliconANGLE. But Stu, give us a preview. What blew you away? What got you excited? I mean, it's certainly a geek dream. Yeah, I, I mean, John, you know, James Hamilton is just one of those, you talk about tech athletes, you know, just the, the real heroes in the space uh, that so many of us look up to. Uh, it's been one of the real pleasures of my career working uh, with theCUBE that I've gotten to speak to James a few times. Uh, and the first article I wrote three years ago uh, about what James Hamilton has done is it's hyper-optimization. The misconception that people had about cloud is, oh, it's just all white box, they're taking standard stuff. Amazon, and what James always talks about is how to you know, really grow and innovate at scale. And that means they build for their environments and they really get down to every piece of the environment. All the software, 
all the hardware, they either customize it or make their own. So, you know, the big monster and then, news. And Stu, to your point, for their own use cases, they're talking about Prime Fridays and, and those spike days. He was talking about how they would have to provision months and months in advance to, to understand some estimated peak that they were spinning up literally thousands of servers. Yeah, so John, you know, Amazon doesn't make a lot of acquisitions, but one that they made is Annapurna Labs. So they've got their own custom silicon that they're making. Uh, so this really allows them to control uh, how they're doing their build out. They can focus on things like performance. Uh, James talked about uh, you know, how they're, they're really innovating on the network side. He was very early with 25 gigabit ethernet, uh, which really drove down some of the costs, gave them huge bandwidth advantages uh, in kind of leading the way in the industry. Uh, the, the, the thing we've been poking at a bit is while Amazon leverages a lot of open source, Course, they don't tend to give back as much. Uh, they've got the big MXNet announcement as to how they're going to be involved in, in the machine learning, and that's good to see. They hired Adrian Cockroft, uh, you know, who lots of us knew from his Netflix days, uh, and when he was a venture capitalist, yeah. uh, he's going to be driving a, a lot of the open source activity. But James, you know, kind of went through everything from. By the way, on your point about yeah. open source, I said it on theCUBE, and I'll say it again, and you mark my words, if Amazon does not start thinking about the open source equation, they could see a revolt that no one's ever seen before in the tech industry, and that is the open source community now is a tier one, it has been for a long time, tier one contributor to innovation. And there's a difference between using open source for an application like Facebook, uh, and a, um, a specific point application, or Google for search. If you're building open source to build a company to take territory from others, there will be a revolt, Stu. Yeah, I mean, do you, John, do you, do you agree, am I off base? Uh, a revolt might be a little strong, but absolutely, we already see some pushback there. And anytime a company gets large power in the marketplace, you see pushback. We saw it with Oracle, we saw it with Microsoft, we see it with VMware, uh, so, you know, and I think Amazon hears this point. Uh, Andy Jassy talks about how they're making meaningful contributions. I expect Adrian uh, to make that much more visible. Um, we'll have to get into some of the James Hamilton stuff at a later date, but I well, mean, Well, you're going to sit down with him with Rob Hoax. Yeah. We'll more on that later. So you and I will hit James Hamilton analysis on theCUBE later. Final thoughts, you were giving me some hell before we came on to talk here about me saying I'm bullish on VMware's relationship with AWS, and you said, really? And I said, I am, because I'm a big fan of VMware, um, also AWS. But for their customers, for VMware customers, this is a good thing. Now, you might have some thoughts yeah. on execution maybe. What, what's your, why, why did you roll your eyes when I said that? So, so, so John, I mean, you know, I have lots of love for the VMware community, uh, you know, spent lots of time in that space, uh, and it, it's good to see uh, VMware working with the public clouds. However, uh, I, I think the balance of power shifts in, the, uh, shifts in the side of Amazon being in control here, uh, and you know, there's a lot of nuance. Where are the services, where are the values, right. what's going to be good for customers? Amazon's really good at, at listening, uh, and you know, this embarrassment of riches that they All right, real today. summary, what, bottom line, what happened this morning in your mind? Abstract it all away in one sound bite. Wait. They rolled a truck out on stage, John. The snowmobile, 100, terabyte, 100 petabytes of storage and a terabyte of information. Something that, you know, we were like, this is amazing. It's, it's the, the, the maturation of the hybrid message is different from what people have been talking about hybrid. Uh, you know, where SaaS right. lives, all the ISVs, where's the data, where's the application. Amazon's in a really good position, John. There's a big and growing ecosystem here, uh, but there's some huge battles that I, I know we're going to get into uh, out in the marketplace. You know, who's going to win voice? Yeah. Uh, you know, everybody's there. Apple's well, there, Microsoft's everyone's, there. Everyone's jockeying for position. You got Google, you got Oracle, you got IBM, you got Microsoft all looking at AWS and saying, how do we change the game on them? And we'll be covering this, theCUBE. We are here in Las Vegas, Studio B, Cube, three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm Jeff Horst, Stu Miniman, breaking it down on day one keynotes and analysis. Thanks for watching, we'll be right back. Stay tuned to theCUBE, Cube at siliconangle.tv. Go to siliconangle.com for all the special, exclusive stories from reInvent, exclusive interviews with Andy Jassy, James Hamilton, and more. Thanks for watching. <laughs>